Hey guys, Kill Stokes here, and welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. If you guys are new, thank you for joining. My name is Kill Stokes. I am your host. I am a Forex trader. I'm a trading coach. I'm also one of the co-founders of TierOneTrading.com. And this is a podcast that I release each and every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, available on almost every single podcasting or music streaming app out there, at least all the popular ones. So Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Google Music, Podbeam, basically wherever you can listen to a podcast at, you should be able to find this podcast there. And if you are listening on an app, please make sure to leave me a rating and review. Much appreciated if you're able to. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about risk taking and five steps to help you become a better risk taker. And this is going to be another guest episode by a very good friend of mine, Bob Vasile. And, and Bob Vasile is someone who motivates me and empowers me, right? We always talk about success and how if you want to become more successful, if you want to become more empowered, surround yourself with people who have the same goal. And, and, and Bob is one of those people for me. He is a TED Talk organizer. He spends a lot of time with the most brilliant minds in the world. So whenever I get a chance to talk to him and meet with him, I try to pick his mind and and involve myself in conversations that will really enlighten me, empower me, and really make me a better me. And then hopefully I can pass that on to you guys. Now, Obviously, I can't pass along every single conversation, but Bob has started a podcast for um, a workshop, a deliberate success workshop that he does at a local university. And every time I listen to an episode that I think will be beneficial to you guys, I try to share it. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, do me a favor. If you guys are on the social media, the Twitter, more specifically, give Bob a shout out. Um, It's at Bob Vasile. That's B O B. V-A-S-I-L-E. Tell them that you love the podcast. Um, There was someone that did that the other day. I apologize for not remembering the name, but someone that listened to the first Bob Vasile podcast I shared, shouted him out on Twitter and just, you know, that positivity just encourages us to do more and more and more and more and it makes all of us better. So give him a follow on Twitter at B-O-B-V-A-S-I-L-E. Tell him you like the podcast and I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for listening to the Deliberate Success Program. This session is on risk-taking. In past podcasts, we've covered self-confidence, self-esteem, self-development, and goal-setting. Armed with this information, you are now a stronger, more confident you, and now you've set goals. However, some of those goals may involve risks. Risk is defined as a situation involving exposure to danger. Danger? That sounds pretty scary. Well, risks can be pretty scary. However, fearing risk will hold you back from your full potential and may not allow you to reach some of your goals. So, how do you deal with risk? Let's take a look at five ways. Step number one, adopt a growth mindset. People that succeed over and over again have what's called a growth mindset. People that seem to keep getting stuck in life, usually because they're holding themselves back, have what's called a fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is believing that your qualities are carved in stone and can't be changed. Unfortunately, people with a fixed mindset try to prove this to themselves over and over. They will subconsciously sabotage themselves so that they don't grow so they can stay at the level in which they feel they belong or with which they're comfortable. Success to them is about, is about proving they're smart or talented. It's about validating themselves. A growth mindset is based on the belief that your basic qualities are things you can build through your own efforts. No matter your talent, aptitude, or starting point, everyone can change and grow through effort and experience. If you have a growth mindset, you know you will have to be out of your comfort zone and take risks. Use long-term vision to assess your risk and provide guidance. Set one eye on the future while focusing on the present. If you embrace personal growth, risks aren't something you have to do, they're something you get to do. It's about stretching yourself to learn something new, 
developing yourself, getting to the next level. Adopting a growth mindset makes the risk-taking process much easier. Step number two, take a lot of small risks. Risks don't have to be huge. They don't have to be all or nothing. They can be small, but still outside your comfort zone. For instance, you can say, I'm going to volunteer to head up that committee at school or work. If you've never done that kind of thing before, it may be outside of your comfort zone. It's also a risk because the outcome of that committee's task may depend on how you lead. There may be consequences for you if your committee doesn't produce the desired outcome. Taking small risks over and over helps build self-efficacy. Self what? Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is an individual's belief in their innate ability to achieve goals. Let me repeat that. Self-efficacy is an individual's belief in their innate ability to achieve goals. In their 1994 study on risk and decision-making, entrepreneur researcher Norris Kruger Jr. and strategic marketing professor Peter Dixon discovered that small, measured risk-taking behaviors can increase self-confidence and self-efficacy. Expectations of self-efficacy determine whether an individual will be able to exhibit coping behavior and how long effort will be sustained in the face of obstacles. Individuals who have high self-efficacy will exert sufficient effort that, if well executed, leads to successful outcomes, whereas those with low self-efficacy are likely to cease effort early and fail. Some may call this grit. The more grit or the more self-efficacy, the greater the chance of success. Self-efficacy affects every area of human endeavor. By determining the beliefs a person holds regarding their power to affect situations, it strongly influences both the power a person actually has to face challenges competently and the choices a person is most likely to make. Studies have shown that these effects are particularly apparent and compelling with regard to behaviors affecting health. Step three, calculate the risk. Successful people take risks, but they're calculated risks. Taking a blind risk may expose you to an outcome for which you haven't planned. Write down the possible outcomes of the risk you're planning to take. Then, write down the consequences of each of those outcomes. See what can be done to minimize risks. Studies have shown that entrepreneurs, who are inherent risk takers, take the risks they do because many times they can live with the worst case scenario. Now, a worst case scenario outcome may not be easy to deal with, but if you can realistically handle it, then you've calculated that it's actually not much of a risk at all. Let's say you want to leave your present job and apply for a different one with a startup company. While the pay is lower, there's a possibility of major advancement and higher pay. It's a big risk, not only because of the initial lower pay, but because you're not sure if the startup company will make it. If they don't, you'll be out of a job. However, if they do make it, you'll be in on the ground floor of an amazing opportunity. So, you would write down the possible outcomes and the resulting consequences of those outcomes. The worst case scenario is the company struggles and goes under and you lose your job. What's the resulting consequence? You have no job and no income. Can you realistically handle this outcome? Well, it'll take some time to find a job. Estimate how long it may take. Let's say you estimate it will take three months. Do you have savings equal to three months of living expenses? If so, it's not much of a risk, especially considering the upside if the risk works out. However, if you are currently living paycheck to paycheck, have no savings, and jobs in your area of expertise are hard to come by, then the risk factor greatly increases. The X factor in all of this is the cost of not taking action. 
This needs to be a part of your calculation. What if you stay in your present job? True, you'll get a steady paycheck, but what about the future? If the company you're with isn't growing, if you've maxed out the level in which you can attain within the company, which results in your pay hardly growing, then not taking action may result in unwanted consequences down the road. This is why it's important to write down the possible outcomes of the risk you're planning to take, the consequences of each of those outcomes, and the pros and cons of taking no action. Calculate the risk. Step number four, avoid the naysayers. People don't do what it takes to make their success deliberate. Most people, anyway. The average person is, well, average. You're striving to be above average, if not well above average. When you need to take a risk and you share with others what that risk is, expect there to be doubters and naysayers. These are the average or below average people who have no interest in making success deliberate. They may ridicule you, tell you the risk you want to take is not worth it, or anything else they can to try and bring you down to their level. For some, it's easier to tear someone else down than it is to build themselves up. Avoid these naysayers. If you really want someone's opinion, ask a mentor or other person whose opinion you really value. Step five, know there will be failures. Not all risks will work out 100% of the time. Just know that it's part of the process. Taking a risk and failing can actually be a positive in a number of ways. First, you'll most likely certainly have learned something along the way. Successful people usually learn more from their failures than from their successes. Second, the failure of what you were trying to do may open the door to an opportunity you would not have had otherwise. Third, if you become a mentor to someone, you can share what didn't work out for you, which will shorten the learning curve for your mentee. And fourth, many times risk takers are looked at as leaders. Since many people are unwilling to take risks, they look up to those that do. With all of these positives, your failure wasn't really a failure when taking a look at the big picture. So there you have it, five steps to risk taking. Let's do a quick review. Step one, adopt a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is believing that your qualities are carved in stone and can't be changed. A growth mindset is based on the belief that your basic qualities are things you can build through your efforts. If you have a growth mindset, you know you will have to be out of your comfort zone and take risks. Adopting a growth mindset makes the risk taking process much easier. Step two, take a lot of small risks. Taking small risks over and over helps build self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is an individual's belief in their innate ability to achieve goals. Individuals who have high self-efficacy will exert sufficient effort that, if well executed, leads to successful outcomes, whereas those with low self-efficacy are likely to cease effort early and fail. Step three, calculate the risk. Successful people take risks, but they're calculated risks. Write down the possible outcomes of a risk you're planning to take. Then, write down the consequences of each of those outcomes. Now, a worst case scenario outcome may not be easy to deal with, but if you can realistically handle it, then you've calculated that it's actually not much of a risk at all. The X factor is the cost of not taking any action. Step four, avoid naysayers. When you need to take a risk and you share with others what that risk is, expect there to be doubters and naysayers. If you really want someone's opinion, ask a mentor or other person whose opinion you really value. And finally, step five, know there will be failures. Just know that it's part of the process. Taking a risk and failing can actually be a positive in a number of ways. You may learn something along the way, it may open a door to an opportunity, it may shorten a learning curve, and it may make you perceived, be perceived as a leader. These five steps can make a huge impact on your life. 
Taking risks and succeeding can literally be life-changing. Learning how to take risks is an important step to deliberate success. Remember, the biggest risk you may take may be in not taking any risk at all.